What's up guys, welcome to another tech video. This one is sort of a Thanksgiving tech video and also kind of the beginning of Black Friday. So if you guys are watching this, wish me luck because I'm probably in the thick of Black Friday right now. Anyway, in the community page I did a poll and over 160 of you voted and the winner for that poll was the best vlogging camera. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. Now this is of course going to be coming from a personal perspective, but you all probably saw the thumbnail. It is the Canon SL2, and I'm going to talk about everything surrounding this in just a minute, but yes, my personal best vlogging camera is the Canon SL2, and uh, this video is going to talk about why. So this Canon SL2 is sort of the middle model between the SL1 and the SL3, because that's how numbers work. But with the SL3 coming out, that means that these have actually come down quite a lot in price. Initially, you could buy the body only of this camera and it would have cost you about $550. And with this 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, which is a decent lens, it's nothing special, you'd be looking at almost $700. But with this camera being older now, I was able to pick this up for $400. That's $300 less and what it would have cost if I had bought it brand new. And that's including the lens. Like th this was a $700 kit in total and I got it for 400. It's not a bad deal. But I'm gonna be dealing enough with getting good deals on Black Friday anyway, so I'm gonna kind of move on from the price. It's a good price if you can find one at a reasonable price. Used examples are generally about three to four hundred dollars. A good used example is about four to four fifty, so just keep an eye out for that. We're gonna move on now. So all in all, why do I consider this the best vlogging camera, at least the best vlogging camera that I've ever owned? Well, first off is the lenses. So for the past few years, I've been using Sony cameras, either this one, the a6000, or the one that you're watching me through, which is the a6300. So lens-wise, Sony lenses have pretty much been the only things in my bag for quite a while now. But the first DSLR I ever started with was this, this Canon T2i. This was actually a pretty decent camera at the time. I borrowed it from my parents because uh, I didn't have a good camera at the time and they did, so I borrowed this. But it's big, it overheats, it's just a monster. But here's the plus. Canon has been using the EF and EFS mounting type for years. This has been their standard mount type. So this is a Tamron EFS mount. This is a decent lens. It's an older lens, but it works. And this was what my parents originally bought for the T2i, and it works on the SL2. In fact, they have been using this mount type for so long that this is a Canon EOS 630 film camera, literally film camera. And check this out. I can take the lens off of it, take the lens off of my Canon, pop it on, I just mounted up a film lens to a digital camera. That's how long they've been using this lens for. And what this means for you at the end of the day as the end user is that you can pretty much look at any Canon lens in the past almost 20 years and it will work with this camera. Even if it was for a film camera, it will work. Now, things like manual focus may not work, which does kill it for vlogging options. You want something with autofocus, but either way, you can find a lot of great deals and they don't always have to be the newest lenses. In fact, they can be surprisingly old lenses. My personal lens of choice for vlogging is this guy. This is a 10 to 18 millimeter. This goes from f 4.5 to 5.6. So it's not the widest aperture, but it is a wide, wide camera. So it's not fast, but it's wide, very wide. Like look at the front element glass on this thing. It's, it's massive. And the reason I use it is because I can go wide and get everything into the shot that I want, but then I can zoom in reasonably. 18 is still very wide, but I can at least cut in quite a bit to see what I want. And the stabilization is good enough that I don't have to worry about any kind of, you know, super shaky camera shots. It's gonna be fairly smooth from end to end. It's pretty nice. Moving over to the left, we have the most important thing when it comes to a vlogging camera. We have a microphone port, which is something that you really can't be without on any kind of camera you want to use for vlogging because you need to have a good mic. Audio and video are 50-50. You've got 50% of the entire experience being audio and 50% being video. And to be honest, the mics that they usually build into cameras are just these two little like cutout things and they're trash every single time they're trash. So do yourself a favor, get a camera like this with a you know actual microphone input. 
And my microphone of choice is this guy. This is a Rode Mic Go. This is actually going to be the Rode Mic Go with an aftermarket Dead Cat uh, windsock on it because I want to cover as much as possible when it comes to good sound. Even if it's windy, I want to be able to make sure that I get good sound even if I don't know what the conditions are going to be. The only problem is that where this is placed means that when you go to open the screen, if you flip it all the way out and spin it, it's in the way, so you actually have to kind of do this little secret handshake spin to get the screen to spin correctly without bashing into the microphone. And just to give you guys an idea here, this is the sound quality off the mic attached to it, because like I said earlier, the mic quality out of the built-in ones is kind of trash. And this is also at 18 millimeters, but the nice thing is I can crank it all the way out to 10, and look how much more area it covers. That is why I like the 10 millimeter lens and the mic combination and the fact that I can see myself there. Anyway, yeah, back to the me talking. And speaking of the screen, that's the other thing I love about this camera, especially for vlogging, because it's a flip around screen. I can turn it and hold it, or I can flip it back and compose my own shot before I even go and press the record button. It is so nice. It's great because no GoPro has done it, except I think the 8 has a module you can attach now to do it. Uh, you don't get that on any of the Sonys except the newest ones, and while the newest ones may have it, it flips up right where the microphone mounts, so it's kind of in the way anyway. This one makes the most sense. It goes off and to the left, which is out of the way of everything except for the microphone jack, but once you figure out how to, you know, kind of do a half rotation on the screen without getting it in the way of the mic jack, it's, it's perfect. It's great. You can do tap to focus lock, but you don't really need to when you're looking at yourself because the face detect autofocus is spot on, way better than this thing. Every time I put it in 4K, it seems to miss focus. But um, it's got great autofocus for face detect, and it's got great focus. If you want to lock onto a subject, a lot of the shots that I've done that are very close up, I actually use my wide lens because it's a macro lens. And I will actually, you know, focus in and have it track whatever I'm focusing. It, it's actually really nice. And the fact that it's touch, navigating the interface is a bit of a pain because the interface is not really made for like swipe touch. It's easier to navigate with the arrow keys, but everything else is nice. I guess talking about the autofocus kind of ties into what I love the most about this camera, which is the video quality out of this camera and the overall shooting experience actually both are very good the overall shooting experience and the video quality pretty much top notch out of something especially for this price to make it very clear though i i do love sony i love the fact that even their cheapest mirrorlesses give you a log profile for more in-depth color correction like this right now is being shot in log this is this is what log looks like before color correction so i actually put a lot of work into making sure that the colors look more saturated and correct. Especially on bigger projects like this where the A-roll footage of me talking needs to be as high quality as possible, but I want something to go run and gun. This is run and gun. Canon's color science is spot on. Their default color profile nails skin tones. It is perfect when it comes to getting greens, blues. The dynamic range isn't the best, but it doesn't have to be because it gets what you want across. It gets your point across. You don't have to do any extra hopping through hoops with color correction. And if you have to do color correction, generally it's very minimal out of this kind of camera. The only times this really struggles is in dark lighting. Like, it gets noisy. It still gets the image, but it gets noisy, which is kind of unfortunate. I wish that there was a little bit better noise reduction out of something like this, but that's kind of what I get for letting it run at ISO... 12,800, uh, which is very high, um, and I actually just leave the ISO on auto most of the time and let it figure out the rest. And I could probably improve it a bit if I didn't shoot on such small aperture lenses, but beggars can't be choosers when it comes to price. And I guess for those of you looking for the technical side of it, this is a 1080p camera. It's not 4K, but for vlogging, nobody really needs 4K for vlogging. It will shoot at 24, 30, or 60 frames per second, but it does not have 120 frames per second, which is kind of unfortunate, but if you start a project at 24 or 30 frames per second, you can film everything in 60 and slow it down by 40%, so you still get some smooth B-roll footage. It's pretty nice. And I mentioned earlier how much the ISO runs from. It goes from ISO 100, which is very nice and clean and noise-free, all the way up to 12,800, which is very, very noisy. Look at this picture. This was a video I took at the, uh, or the, yeah, this was a video I took at an NHRA event, and this was as we were leaving in the evening. And once you turn the camera away from the lights on the track, it was just so noisy. 
All right, and on the subject of low light video, this thing may actually end up being used in low light video more than you think because with two batteries, I was able to get this thing to run all day. I mentioned earlier that I took this to a drag racing event which started at about eight in the morning and ran until almost 10 at night. And I had to change the battery once and by the end of the day, I had 50% left in the other battery. So it didn't even burn through two batteries in an entire day. So this camera pretty much nails it when it comes to taking something to shoot all day with minimal equipment. And when I say minimal equipment, I don't just mean taking around not a whole lot. This is one of the smallest DSLRs I have ever used. Now, I used the T2i as an example earlier because it's big. Now, this also has an extended grip on it, but even not counting the extended grip, this camera is so much smaller than this camera. It, it's insane to me. And it's just, I mean, it's not as small as like a mirrorless. The mirrorless is still a lot smaller, but that's because you're missing an entire mirror assembly you can see here. But even with that being said, this gets you so much better quality overall with video for run and gun and color than something like an entry-level Sony mirrorless camera and tons better battery and value and size and quality, all those things, than this T2i, which is still a great camera, but not a great video camera overall. And my general vlogging equipment, because I wanna actually try to start doing it more, has kind of been honed into the 10 to 18 millimeter Canon lens with this SL2, a Rode Go mic, which is about $100, but it is an incredible quality for the microphone. I mean, have a listen. Huh? Is everybody here so friendly? Yeah, yeah. And like I told you, you have to walk through the pits just to, just get, to get to, to the, the track. Feet. Oh my gosh. That's so, so cool. Along with the windsock to make sure that, you know, different environments don't affect the sound quality as much as if you just left the mic open or use the default one. A Joby Gorillapod with a quick release. Now, the quick release is not as necessary, but it is nice to be able to go from mounting it anywhere with the Gorillapod, because Gorillapods are very versatile, to taking it and holding it handheld if I wanted to. Having that option is very nice. And that's my general setup. Three pieces of equipment to attach to one very diminutive camera. It's small easy to carry around. I can mount it anywhere with the, go uh, the Gorillapod. I can hear everything I want to with an improved microphone, and I can capture everything that I want in the frame with 10 millimeter and punch into something that I want to bring attention to with the 18 side of it. And I have a ton of lens choices, and it's cheap now, and I have an SD card in there that's 128 gigs, so I almost never run out of video. It's, it's great. I love this camera. And that, personally, for me, is why I think that the T2i is probably the best vlogging camera out there for the money. It's gonna be hard to find anything better. Yeah, it's a crop camera. Yeah, it's only 1080p, but it was $400 plus 150 for the lens. And I put all told probably about $600 into this vlog setup that I'm not gonna to have to touch for years. So if my videos continue to be made for the next few years, I mean, I'm not gonna give you exact numbers on what I make on videos, but it would make its value back in about a year actually probably less than a year, but still. And I don't intend to change anything about it. It works just fine. And I can find lenses from so many cameras from so many different years that I don't have to worry about running out of lens options anytime soon. I'll still use my Sony for things like B-roll footage and for these kind of A-roll shots because it shoots in 4K. But in reality, this is a phenomenal camera for somebody who is not a beginner, but somebody who wants to get a solid build that doesn't cost a whole lot and will last them a very long time and fit all of their needs. Because really for beginners, I would literally just say, use the front facing camera or the rear facing camera on your phone because they're also really good. But either way, that's why I think the Canon SL2 is the best vlogging camera for somebody getting into vlogging after having started on something like their phone or a, or a cheaper camera and they want to step their game up. I hope you guys agree. If not, let me know what you guys think or what you guys would use down in the comments. I don't tend to like to talk about what I use personally because I don't want you all to feel like you need to use it as well. But you know, sometimes it helps to share because if you guys have a general idea of what I'm using, you can kind of get a better idea for what might work best for you. Either way guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out some of the links down in the description. And apart from that, I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.
Hey guys, just hopping in at the end here. Thanks for watching through the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. I do still have merch. I've actually had it for quite a while, but not a lot of people know about it or care. And so if you guys want to support me or check it out just because it looks cool, go to the link in the description. You can see some of the designs I have, like the Steel Frodo in Steinsgate design, or even the Mob Psycho 100 design, and maybe even buy one if you like it, or don't. I cried myself to sleep at night anyway. So either way, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one.